Hi, and welcome to this video for the question six on paper one of the 2020 Leaving Cert Maths paper, uh, ordinary level. So if you want to copy these notes, just send me an email at shanetroy.gmail.com. And if you subscribe, you get access to more playlists. Okay. So question six here is um, a differentiation. I had a quick look at it before we did, but not a detailed one. So part one here looks at differentiate the function f of x equal to 4x to the power of 3, take away 3x squared plus x minus 7. So this is a cubic equation or a third order polynomial. Okay, It looks something like that. Now it might cross the x-axis three times. Well, in this case, they're not, with all that other information doesn't really matter. We're straight away asked to differentiate. So you know what? Let's do what they ask. Okay, so again, this is the, there's four terms here. I can apply the power rule to each one. And the power rule says I multiply the power by number in front. So three fours is 12. Step two of the power rule is take one from the power. So x to the power of three take away one is two. So that's the for, first term differentiated. And the second term, so again, power by number front, plus two minus is minus, two threes is six. Take one from the power, two take away one is one. The next one then, um, now, you, if I just I suppose follow the logic here, that's x to the power of one. So power by number front, one by one is one. Take one away from the power, one take away one is zero. Now in math, and the power of zero is one, so that becomes one times one, which is one. What we can learn off is, whenever you differentiate a variable on its own, it just disappears, drops away. You're left with the number in front, which in this case just happens to be one. Now, any number when differentiated always turns to zero. I suppose effectively, if that was your x, y axis, and that was the line minus seven, what like slope does it have? Is it going up? Is it going down? It's not, it's neither. It's zero. And that's it. So this is the derivative of my original function. I think that's all they're asking. Okay, all this stuff here doesn't matter. That's it. Now, part two then says, find the slope of the tangent now, a tangent is a line that touches one, at one point only to the graph, the, the, one we, the, the function we were given, at this point. Remember, if you're given a coordinate, it has a y, x and a y value. And the other important information here is the slope. Now, not to put too fine a point on it, the purpose of differentiation is to find the slope or the change of one variable relative to another. Okay, so look, we know the slope equation. We just did it in part one. So I've got a copy to cross. Okay. Now I know what I said, find the slope. So find this. Okay. At this point. Now there's an x and a y here. If you see here, this only has x's. So if I put the x value there, which is one, put it in brackets everywhere I see x. Put that through my calculator and I get 12, the one by one is one, so it should be 12, take six plus one. I think you're gonna get, what's that, 13, take away six is seven. Okay, so your answer is seven. Now the next page I have the answers done out, okay. And that should follow up, so again, that's the, the derivative. The derivative is the slope, okay. So I'm, I'm looking for the slope, that's what I'm gonna find. The x value I was given, okay, that's the value here. Substitute it in, I've done it here, put it to the calculator, I've got seven. Happy days. Now the next one says find the equation of the tangent. Again, tangent is a line that touches the graph at one point only of the graph at this point. So the point was one, which one is it? One minus five? Yeah, one minus five. Now we've just worked out the slope is equal to seven. And that'll be important because if I want to use this what's the most traditional way. I'm going to use the equation of the line um, formula. Now, to do this, I need to know a point. That's your x1, y1, and that's your m value. So these three things get substituted. Once you do that, okay, you're pretty much there. So it's y take away negative 5. That's the y value up here. Equals, now the m was 7. We got that from our previous part. Okay. And if you didn't know the previous part, part two, you'd always just make up an answer in part two, declare it, and use the answer here. It'll be accepted as perfectly correct. And the x1 value was one. 
Now at that stage, you should do pretty well, okay? Um, but you should go left to right and remove brackets. Minus by minus is a plus. Then multiply the seven in. Seven times x is seven x. Seven times negative one plus by minus is minus. Seven ones is seven. But the way the leaving sort of the SEC want it, they want everything on one side, x being positive, okay? Um, so I need to move the y across and the five across. So both of these are being added on the left side, so they'll become subtracted on the far side. That's my answer, but if you tidy up that last little bit, x is positive, minus y. Now, minus 5, minus 7, I believe that's minus 12. That's it. That's the equation of the tangent touching the graph. Okay. So that should be the answer I have here. Okay. And then now part um, b here. Okay, it's only worth five marks. And this is an awful lot of work in this question. It should be worth 25 marks in one sense. Okay. And there's a lot of you know different things we need to focus on. But let's try get the low partial at the very, very least. Now we're told, okay, you've got a function g of x is equal to 2x squared plus px plus q. If you see this, look, there's, there's four unknowns. This is an unknown. Your x value is unknown. This p value and this q value. So look, there's no way in the world you can solve this. So you know, things aren't looking good. Now they give you some fluff. Both p and q are going to be um, integers, either positive or negative whole numbers. The x values can be any number. But again, that's about that's fluffy, you don't it won't affect the answer. You're also given these two statements. You said when x is two, the output is six. Okay, so you go right, okay. Well, if I put two in, okay, I get six as an answer. Now, in a, in a sense, all I'm doing is putting two in here, and this becomes my answer. So Six is equal to two times two squared plus p times two plus q. That's easier said than done, but you can you're given like you're gonna suppose realize that when this number goes in, this comes out. Now I can simplify this by um, just going left to right and re resolving this. So six is equal to now two squared is four times two is eight plus p times two is two p plus q. Now, I've had to actually just overwrite the video um, because I messed this up and I'd gone through four more minutes of work. I multiplied p by two and got one p the last time. So hopefully I won't make a mistake again. And I'm going to bring this eight this way. Okay. And that becomes six take away eight is minus two is equal to two p plus q. So I have an equation of two unknowns. Now, that's something. I've done fairly well. I've got the marks. They also tell me that they want me to find this g of 3 is equal to 9. Now, this indicates that I have to differentiate my equation. So we're told that g of x is equal to 2x squared plus px plus q. Now, again, it's actually be for my bad writing. So look, if it looks weird, but I'll just differentiate it using the power rule. So power by number in front, 2 times 2 is 4. Take 1 from the power, 2 take away 1 is 1. The second term here, we learned the x just drops away. Okay, you're left with the number in front, which in this case is p. And any number on its own turns to zero, so it's gone. Now we're also told that when you put three in to the derivative, or the differentiator function, you get nine. So let's put three in. Four times three, okay, plus p. They're telling us that's equal to nine. Now, if you've done this, you got this far, and you're kind of going, what do I do now? Well, you know what? Remove brackets. Okay, 4 times 3 is 12, uh, plus p. Bring the 12 across, becomes minus 9. Take away 12 is minus 3. And that equals to p. So if you've found one of the two things you're asked for, you found p. Now, how do you find q? Well, go back to one of the equations that mentions it. So look, I'm going to use this one over here. So minus 2 is equal to 2p plus q. Now, I know what p is, okay? No, we shouldn't have written that there. Uh, that's equal to two uh, times minus three. Actually, didn't need that bracket, plus q. Now, if I just go left to right and resolve that, 
2 by minus 3 is minus 6, plus q. Bring the minus 6 across, becomes plus 6. Minus 2 plus 6 equals q. That's plus 4 equals q. And that should be the answer from the next page. Okay, and it is. Okay, so there are my two values of p and q. I could test them and put them back in to one of the equations and see if it tests, but I've not asked that. It's taken us loads of time. You don't have endless amounts of time to do every question, so it's time, it's time to move on. And that's the end of question six. So this is the question six of paper one, Leaving Star Ordinary Level 2020. If you want to send these notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And if you click to subscribe, you'll get access to more playlists and stuff like that. Okay, cheers. Thank you.